All right, we are on Magic Treehouse book number 14. We are on chapter seven called The Burning of the Books. Chapter seven. The Dragon King watched the bonfire as it blazed up toward the sky. Around the fire, the air was thick and wavy. Bamboo book books were stacked beside the fire waiting to be burned. Hurry, said the scholar. They jumped down from the cart and joined the crowd by the bonfire. The Dragon King shouted to the soldiers. They began throwing the books into the fire. The bamboo crackled as it burned. Stop, cried Annie. Jack grabbed her. Quiet, he said. Annie pulled away. Stop, she shouted again, but her voice was lost in the noise of the roaring fire. There's your story, said the scholar. He pointed to a bamboo book that had fallen off a waiting stack. I'll get it, said Annie. She ran over to the book. Annie, cried Jack but she had already snatched up the bamboo bundle and was charging back to them. I got it, quick, put it in your bag, she said. Jack put the ba bundle of bamboo strips in his sack. Then he looked around fearfully. He gasped. The Dragon King was glaring at them. Then he headed their way. Seize them, the Dragon King shouted. Run through the burial grounds, the scholar said to Jack and Annie. The soldiers will be afraid to follow. They're afraid of the spirits of the ancestors. Thanks, said Jack. Thanks for everything. Good luck, cried Annie. Then she and Jack took off. Soldiers shouted after them. An arrow whizzed by, but Jack and Annie kept running. They ran down the path to the burial grounds. They jumped over the low brick wall and ran between the huge mounds of earth. Suddenly, arrows filled the air around them. The archers were shouting, the archers were shooting from the tower. Look, cried Jack. There was a doorway in one of the mounds. Jack and Annie ducked inside. They were in a long hall lit with oil lamps. It's so quiet, said Annie. She walked down the passageway. Hey, there are some steps here. Don't go any farther, said Jack. Why not, said Annie. We don't know what's down there, said Jack. This is a burial tomb, remember? It's kind of creepy. Let's just take a quick look, said Annie. Maybe it's the way out of here. Jack took a deep breath. <sighs> you might be right, he said. Okay, but go slow. He didn't want to stumble upon anything. Annie started down the steep steps. Jack followed. The lamps lit their way as they kept going down and down. Finally, they reached the bottom. Jack blinked. Even though oil lamps glowed everywhere, it was hard to see at first. When Jack's eyes got used to the strange light, his heart nearly stopped. Oh man, he breathed. They were in a room filled with soldiers, thousands of them. Chapter eight, the tomb. Jack and Annie stood frozen. The silent soldiers did too. Finally, Annie spoke. Hey, they're fake, she said. Fake, whispered Jack. They're not real, she said. But they look real, said Jack. Annie walked straight toward the front row of soldiers. Jack held his breath. Annie pulled the soldier's nose. Fake, she said. Oh, brother, said Jack. He walked over to the soldier and touched his painted face. It was as hard as stone. Amazing, said Jack. Annie nodded. It's like a museum. She walked down a row between two lines of soldiers. Wait, this is spooky, said Jack. What is this place? He put down his sack and pulled out the china book. He found a picture of the frozen army and read aloud. The Dragon King had 7,000 life-size clay figures made for his burial tomb. The clay was baked and painted. The Dragon King hoped that one that the clay army would pro would provide him protection in the afterworld. It's like the pyramid in ancient Egypt, said Jack. Remember, the queen was buried with a boat and lots of things to take to the afterlife. He looked around. Annie, I'm here, she called. She was far down another row. Come back here, said Jack. No, you come here, said Annie. It's so cool. All their faces are different. Jack threw the book into his sack. Then he hurried down the road to Annie. Look, she said, just look at them.
In the flickering lamplight, they wandered, wandered down the rows of soldiers. No two soldiers had the same nose, the same eyes, or the same mouth. Oh, man, no wonder so many people had to work on this tomb, said Jack. They really did a good job, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. They were kneeling ar there were kneeling archers and foot soldiers dressed in red and black armor. There were real bronze swords and daggers, bows and arrows. There were even life-size wooden chariots with horses. The horses looked completely real. They were different colors with white teeth and red tongues. I have to take some notes about all this, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. Then kneeling on the brick floor, he wrote, no two faces the same, not even the horses. Jack, said Annie. You know what? What? I think we're lost, she said. Lost? Jack stood up. We're not lost. Yeah? Then which way is out, said Annie. Jack looked around. All he could see were rows of soldiers. In front of them, to the right, to the left, behind them, nothing but clay soldiers. Which way did we come, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. All the rows looked the same. They stretched out endlessly. Jack tried not to panic. I'd better look this up, he said. Forget it, said Annie. Morgan said the research book would guide us. But in our darkest hour, only the ancient legend would save us. Is this our darkest hour, asked Jack. Annie nodded. Yeah, it's pretty dark. It does seem to be getting darker in here, thought Jack. The air was getting thicker, too. It seemed harder to breathe. Let's ask for help, said Jack. He reached into the sack and pulled out the bamboo book. He held it up and said, save us. As Jack waited, the tomb seemed unbearably quiet. Jack held the book up again. Please help us find our way out, he said. He and Annie kept waiting, but nothing happened. The air was growing even thicker. The light was getting dimmer. The rows of soldiers seemed a little creepier. Help did not come. Jack felt faint. I guess, I guess we'll just have to look, Annie said. What? The ball of thread. It rolled out of your sack, she said. So what, said Jack. He looked at his cloth sack lying on the floor. The ball of yellow silk thread had rolled out and it was still rolling, leaving a trail of yellow thread. And that's the end of chapter eight. Tomorrow we'll read chapter nine called The Silk Path. Have a great day, guys. I'll meet again tomorrow.